San Francisco is one of the USA's most visited cities with over 15 million people that visit here in a typical year, but tourism is way down. I've been walking around San Francisco today and there are very few visitors here. Why? People just don't feel safe. I've gotten the question from a lot of you, Chris, is it safe to visit San Francisco right now? So that's what I'm doing here in this video. I haven't been here for a couple years but since the pandemic and I want to revisit it, see how it feels. And I've discovered six areas that I think make people feel less safe when they're here. And so that's what I'm gonna talk through in this video. I'm also gonna tell you uh, some of the safest neighborhoods to stay in if you're planning to book a hotel and also some of the least safe neighborhoods, maybe the ones you might wanna avoid on your trip to San Francisco. Number one is shoplifting. This is probably the most high profile thing that'll make you feel unsafe in San Francisco. CVS, drug stores, lots of places have been the target of rampant shoplifting. And you're sure shoplifting is a problem everywhere in every city in the world, but in San Francisco, so much more it seems than everywhere else because the crooks are brazen. They go into these stores, they bring trash bags and they just fill it up with stuff and then they just walk out. They don't get stopped by the security guards, they don't get stopped by the store staff, they don't get stopped by the police. They don't get stopped by anybody because there was a proposition passed recently that basically made it no longer a felony or a big crime to shoplift under $900. And so they just make sure everything they steal is under $900. They never get prosecuted on it and they get to do it over and over again. I mean, it's gotten so crazy that they lock up $6 toothpaste to pine glass and the entire liquor aisle on both sides is behind glass and locked up as well. Now, before I go on to number two, I don't want you to think this is a video where Chris is just crapping on San Francisco, that Chris hates San Francisco, that Chris says that nobody should ever come to San Francisco. I, I love this city. I love to come to this city. I want this city to be amazing. And so I want San Francisco to clean up some of these problems. I want you to feel safe. And I'm thinking that maybe they should reopen Alcatraz to help curtail some of those shoplifting problems. Number two is car break-ins. In 2021, San Francisco led the nation in car break-ins with over 20,000 car break-ins last year. Uh, the reason why I say over, there's about 18,000 that were reported, and you know there's gonna be more that were unreported than just the ones that were reported. Why are so many people breaking into cars? Another one, if it's considered under $900, they don't stop them. But where do the crooks target cars? In the touristy areas, Union Square, Chinatown, and number one, Fisherman's Wharf, where I'm shooting a lot of this video. Why? Because this is where juicy tourists come that often have suitcases, laptops, electronics, and cameras in their car. So I have two pro tips for you to avoid this. One is to actually consider parking your car at a hotel valet. I parked my car when making this video at the Marriott Fisherman's Wharf valet in their parking structure underneath where it happens a lot. It happens in parking garages, it happens on the street, happens in broad daylight where people break into cars. It's become so bad that many residents have actually uh, are keeping their trunks open, their glove boxes open, showing that there's absolutely nothing in their car. And you might think, well, look, I've got a rental car and it's got a trunk and so my valuables are out of sight. Look, the crooks know what rental cars look like and so they particularly target rental cars. So if you've got stuff in your car, it, it is not safe. So you could consider also not bringing your car into San Francisco. You know, leave your car home, take public transportation, take Uber, uh, or in, what I did, in fact, to make this video. I flew in this morning, I stopped into my hotel at noon, checked in, but my plan was even if I couldn't check into my room, I was gonna leave my stuff with the hotel better than leaving it in the trunk of my car. Car break-ins are really such a huge issue that you now see these signs all over the city to remind you to take your valuables with you. It's also funny when the signs signs are graffitied. The third thing you gotta watch out for in San Francisco is poop. And you know, in European cities, you have to watch out for poop too, but in European cities, it's, it's of the dog variety. And in San Francisco, unfortunately, it's of the human variety because in San Francisco, it is perfectly legal to do your business wherever you would like on the street, on the sidewalk, not a big deal. There has actually uh, been websites that have put together San Francisco poop maps and San Francisco has a special poo patrol that goes out to clean up all the poop. So when you are walking around, definitely beware of those not poop emojis, but actual poop on the streets. Number four, beware of pickpockets, particularly on buses and trams and in touristy areas like Fisherman's Wharf. If you got a backpack, keep it in front of you. If you've got your wallet in your pocket, keep your hand on it. I love these 
pack safe bags that I carry around. These are great pickpocket proof bags. I've got a whole video review of these if you want to watch it, but the zippers clip in makes it really hard to steal things. But you might be lulled into a false sense of safety and don't be because there are people when you feel safe, that's when they're going to be after your stuff. Now, in addition to pickpocketing, number five, robberies are also on the rise, particularly on public transportation, particularly on the BART, the Bay Area Rapid Transit, the subway. And when the way this works is it's usually your phone that's the target or maybe your purse. It often happens to people that are sitting near the door. The crooks, they come in and they wait till the train comes to the stop. And when the door is open, they profile the person who's got their phone, who's got their bag, and then they snatch it real quick and run out the door just so the doors close and you can't go after them anymore. So if you are riding public transit, I'd really encourage you to pay attention and to keep your phone in your pocket and just be looking around. Now, there have been some high profile things about cameras being stolen in San Francisco recently. A good friend of mine, Jefferson Graham, he was shooting in San Francisco, had his camera set up on a tripod. Some people in a car came up, grabbed this tripod, tossed in the car and drove off. Uh, so definitely be careful if you have any camera gear. I would not recommend that you put on a tripod. I'd recommend that you hold it in your hand all the time, which is in fact what I'm doing shooting this video. The camera right here never leaves my hand. Now the sixth thing that you need to be aware of is the large unhoused population in San Francisco. At last count in 2019, there were 5,000 people living on the streets in San Francisco and the pandemic has certainly made more. I notice more, I see more. What's the number? I don't have any hard statistics for you, but they're, they're in a lot of places that they didn't used to be. They didn't really used to be in Fisherman's Wharf, but now they're here in Fisherman's Wharf as well. So now you could be saying to yourself, Chris, do people sleeping on the street really make you feel unsafe? And no, it's not people sleeping on the street that make me feel unsafe, but a fair percentage of the unhoused in San Francisco, I'm not saying all of them, and not half, but a significant amount of the population, significant enough that I experience it when I come here, need mental help. They are shouting obscenities at invisible enemies until I look at them and then they think I am their enemy. If there's really one thing that's made me feel the least safe in San Francisco are definitely the people on the street that uh, are yelling at the top of their lungs because I'm worried, I don't, I don't know what they're gonna do. That's a big worry. And where do I see the most? in the city center, in the neighborhoods we're gonna talk about next, as maybe some of the ones you might want to avoid. So now let's get into the discussion of what are some of the least safe and most safe neighborhoods in San Francisco. These are based on crimes reported to the San Francisco Police Department, and the neighborhood with the most crimes reported is the Tenderloin. The Tenderloin is the one that you'll probably want to pay attention to most as a tourist, because the Tenderloin is right next to Union Square, which is where a lot of the touristy hotels are um, and I often get a lot of people who say Chris how do I how do I know where the tenderloin is how do I stay away from it um, Google Maps type in tenderloin uh, but basically don't go kind of south or west of Union Square if you are just going to the east and north then you're pretty good staying away from the tenderloin now that being said Market Street which kind of runs through the heart of San Francisco the part south of Union Square is also one of the worst neighborhoods for crimes being reported now when I say Market Street it's not all of Market Street it's mostly the part of Market Street that's south of Union Square if you go to the north like towards the cable car turnaround and towards the ferry building that's all pretty good stay in that section as a tourist. Third worst is the Mission District, although there's some really good Mexican food and tacos and burritos down there. And then fourth worst is Western Edition, which also turns out to be where Japantown is. Now, just because these have crimes board doesn't mean there aren't things you should see there, things to go there, but you should definitely be on your guard more in these neighborhoods. Now, one of the safest neighborhoods in San Francisco is the Marina District, this district that I'm standing in right now, but there aren't any hotels here, really not that many. So the two neighborhoods that are really good with hotels, uh, one is Knob Hill. This is up on a big tall hill from the business district, and there are some nice hotels up there. I think it's so safe because people who commit crimes don't wanna walk up the tall hill, though the con is that um, there's not great transportation around Knob Hill. The second safe district to stay in that we like to stay in is the financial district. Uh, this is also near the ferry building. There's like a Hyatt over there, high-end hotels, and you can actually get some pretty inexpensive hotels there on the weekends since it's mostly office buildings, things like that there, though it's not in the middle of the nightlife. Now you'll probably say, well, Chris, what about, what about the neighborhood you've been shooting a lot of this video in? What about Fisherman's Wharf? 
Fishman's Wharf has a lot of crimes reported. Does that make it unsafe? Does that make it feel unsafe? I just think there's a lot of target-rich opportunities, which makes a lot of crimes. It feels like a safe neighborhood, but the statistics say otherwise. Okay, now the silver lining to all of this is that although crime is up in San Francisco, it's mostly petty crime. And if you're the victims of it, your car gets broken into, that's a real drag. But violent crime in San Francisco is actually some of the lowest of any of the big cities in the US. So your risk of being a victim of a violent crime in San Francisco, quite low. Now, with all this being said, petty crimes being up, can you still enjoy San Francisco? I'll tell you, I still enjoyed San Francisco making these videos while I was here. I think you can too. I just think you need to be mindful of all these things. Realize that it's a little different place right now than maybe it has been before. I really hope the San Francisco government kind of gets everything together, the police clean it up. It's gonna take a while. It's not gonna be overnight, um, but you know, I think this can be a great city once again. It's still a great city, but I think we can uh, help get rid of some of this urban rock and make it awesome for all of us to enjoy. The last thing, just as sunset is coming here that I've noticed on this trip is things are closing way earlier than they used to and the streets are clearing out way earlier than they used to. So maybe think about just getting back to your hotel a little bit earlier, maybe not staying out perhaps as late as you did because you might not be with uh, as many of your tourist friends as you were before since everything seems to shut at about eight o'clock now in San Francisco. Well, if you are planning to come here, and I hope you do. Check out some of my videos right here, more of my San Francisco series. You'll also find links in the description below. As usual, I won't say goodbye because I'll see you in one of these videos.